You've seen my briefing to the Security Council. There's been a bloody onslaught in full swing now for more than three months on the people of Idlib. And if it doesn't stop, as I've said before, it has the potential to create the worst humanitarian disaster the world has seen so far this century. There is no refuge for the people of Idlib. Hundreds of them have been killed, hundreds more injured, 440,000 of them displaced, but there is nowhere else for them to go. As I also said to the Security Council, I am very concerned too about the dozens of civilians killed or injured as a result of shelling by the Security Council listed Hayat Tahrir Shaman organization and the non-state groups associated with them. I want to show you a couple of pictures of the town of Kafa Nabutha, which I briefed the council on. So, so this is what, this is a town in southern Idlib. This is what Kafa Nabutha looked like on the 26th of April. You can see there are houses and buildings and cars and signs of life all over that town. This is what Kafa Nabutha looked like after three months of carpet bombing. Barely a building in existence anymore. A town turned into a pile of rubble. As I said in the council, there are 16 other villages which have been destroyed in this military campaign in exactly the same way. The United Nations is reaching more than six million people a month with humanitarian assistance in Syria at the moment. The large majority of those people are in areas controlled by the government. A smaller but very important proportion of those people are in areas not under government control. We are doing everything we can to scale up our assistance to the 440,000 people who have been forced to flee the bombing and fighting, especially in southern Idlib, to the northwest of that uh, governorate. As you know, I've spoken in the last few days to people living under the bombardment that's going on in Idlib. I've spoken to doctors and health workers, and I've, I've especially spoken to children. And I asked them if they have a message for the Security Council, and they do. We are afraid. Please help us. Make it stop. I'm happy to take your questions. Yeah, Edie. Mr. Lowcock, um, we heard a lot this morning about the deconfliction system and um, locations being hit that have been shared with the parties to the conflict. Is that? Can you just clarify, is that system still operating? Is anyone still sharing their locations and as you know the one of the main parties to the conflict is a veto power on the security council so unfortunately not a lot is likely to happen um you've in in response to your request for security council action so what what happens now the the purpose of the deconfliction system is to allow parties to the conflict to fulfill their obligations to protect civilians and civilian objects they are responsible for complying with IHL. The system, the deconfliction system, is there to help them do that. Now, a lot of facilities are already registered on the system. Organizations running hospitals and schools and um, you know, other civilian facilities have given my office the details of the coordinates, and we have given those to the parties, as I described to the council. It is an extremely important question as to what is done with that information. And as I said to the council, the question is, is that information used as it's intended to protect facilities in the ongoing conflict, or is it being used to target facilities? And that is the question on which I have repeatedly asked for additional information. Sorry, on the other question about what, what should the council 
do? I mean, can can the UN launch an inquiry on its own without? Well, you heard a number of member states um, call for um, inquiries to be put in place, and I understand some of them want to talk to the Secretary General about that. Obviously, we will um, listen to what they have to say, and the Secretary General will um, take the appropriate decision in the light of that. Edie. As a quick follow-up to that, um, on the idea of an inquiry, is it something that OCHA would support, given that um, certainly uh, deliberately attacking health facilities and schools is considered a war crime under international law? And then I have another question. So we want the bombing and the fighting, whoever's doing it, to stop. That's our first priority. But there does need to be accountability, as Michelle Bachelet said in her statement, for um, violations. And that requires the gathering of evidence um, and appropriate processes after that. And as I um, said to the council, I was asked when I briefed them, I think on the 18th of July in the closed consultations, whether we would, my office would provide uh, to the IIIM and the Commission of Inquiry the evidence available um, in our system. And I said, yes, we will provide that um, evidence if, if it's going to be helpful to support accountability. The only proviso is that those who've given us any sense of information need to give their consent to us handing over that information. Also, the Russian ambassador did not seem um, to accept what you said about um, methodology, particularly on the number of uh, health facilities. Um, and he also um, said that uh, the real goal of um, Western countries was to uh, basically keep the terrorists in Idlib and not get rid of them. How do you respond to that? Well, the second part of what you've quoted there is um, not something that it's for me to respond to. On the first issue, I set out in quite a lot of detail, actually, a much greater length than I normally do in front of the council, exactly the way in which we gather information, we triangulate it, we corroborate it. There's no mystery or secret or uncertainty about what's happening in Idlib. There's testimony from countless sources about hospitals being hit, schools being hit, bakeries being destroyed. I've just shown you pictures of whole villages being destroyed. So everybody knows what's happening. Um, so we will continue to provide um, information that we've corroborated that is from reliable sources, that's triangulated. We take extremely seriously our responsibility to make sure that what we say is correct. Last one. Thank you, Mr. Lowcock. When the Security Council is paralyzed with a permanent member of the Council, Russia bombing hospitals and medical facilities, what can the UN do? And a second question, Turkey is one of the guarantor countries of the Idlib Memorandum. Do you have a message to Turkey? What can the Turks do? Well, the, you know, the Council was established with a certain mandate and certain responsibilities, and the Council knows what's going on and um, has heard the pleas of the people of Idlib, and member states in the Council need to decide what they're going to do. Are they going to listen to the people of Idlib as they go through the terrible suffering they go through, or are they going, as Michelle Bachelet fears, to simply give a shrug? The world is going to see what happens on that. Now, um, the, um, in respect of the um, position of the government of Turkey, obviously when the um, Russian Federation and the Turkish authorities agreed in September the, um, the de-escalation arrangements, I welcome that, including here in the Council. And we've repeatedly called for a ceasefires. We want um, access for humanitarian um, aid from all directions. We've asked um, to have access from Damascus. At the moment, they're not willing to agree for us to do that, so we're reliant on the cross-border operation. Obviously, for the people of Idlib, everything we bring in, uh, medical supplies and food and everything else we bring in, comes across the um, Turkish border. And so we're reliant on the 
ongoing uh, cooperation and collaboration from the Turkish authorities uh, for that. Thank you very much indeed. I wonder asking if you could possibly hold up the two slides so they can get a close up with you sure. holding of each of them again. Sir, what are name? Uh, this is, can, you uh, hold it, can you hold it on the same side as you did last time, just so it's got a cut? Yeah. That's just, awesome. Just hold it, there we go, hold it right there. Thank you. There's no, you know, these photos are quite widely available. Everybody can see what's going on. Thank you, very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.